question is that the motion be agreed to. Uh, Reno Tirakatni. Atena koe, Mr. Speaker. Atero waka. Ngati rangi we wehi. Ngati rangi te aurere. Tapu ika. Ngā puna wai o te toko toru. Te nā kauta. Te nā kauta. No mai hara mai ki te fare para mate takatū nei. Hari koa hau ki te ki te tū ki te kore ro te wafa ku mutu ngā o te nei pere. No reira te nā kauta. Te nā kauta. Rau ranga tira ma huri rau nei te fare te nā kauta katoa. Mr. Speaker. It gives me great pleasure to speak at this final reading of the uh, Ngā Puna Wai o Te Tokotoru, Tokotoru Settlement Bill. Sir, today is an historic day. It's a historic day in the lives of three part proud iwi of the Te Arawa Confederation. After so many years and so many governments, the tribes Rangi Wewehi, Rangi Te Aurere and Tapuika can start to look towards a new future for their people and for their whānau, and it's wonderful to see so many of them who have travelled from afar to be here to celebrate this historic day. For over 20 years, sir, these tribes have been more than patient, and it sort of concerns me that uh, after such a, a lot of mahi that has gone on, that we only get 10 minutes to devote to, to three iwi on these speeches, but such are the rules of parliament or the procedures that we uh, have to uh, adhere to. So it doesn't give us much time. Nevertheless, I will do my best to reflect something of the tragic circumstances that befell these three iwi that have led us here today. Sir, the three iwi, to use our Office of Treaty Settlement term, are a large natural grouping. In Māori terms, they are whanaunga, or kazis, as to use a more colloquial term. Rangi te aurere and rangi wewehi descend from Tamate Kapua, while Tapuika descend from Tia, both of the Te Arawa canoe that came to Aotearoa from the Pacific. Mr Speaker, it goes without saying what a terrible impact the New Zealand wars had upon these three and many other iwi, as we have uh, put various other settlement bills through this House. I like to say in my speeches, sir, that to understand the whakapapa is to understand Māori history. And that has been a consistent theme that I use throughout. And so from Polynesia to the Bay of Plenty and inland to Rotorua, the tribes of Rangiwewehi, Rangite Aurere and Tapuika certainly have had that close relationship. They are part of what's known as the eight beating hearts of Te Arawa that play such an important part of tribal life. I'll attempt to make mention at least of one grievance of each of these tribes that, that they've had to carry bearing in mind, though, sir, that there are hundreds. Firstly, uh, let's acknowledge all the three iwi. They were drawn into the Kingitanga dispute <coughs> with the Crown. Whether on principle or because of a genealogical relationship, all played a part on all the sides of the wars. Truly, it became for some whānau against whānau and hapu against hapu. Hio ya no, such were the divisive ways of the governor and his war machine, it was about divide and conquer. That was the stock standard modus operandi of the day. Take from them what they value most and you will deprive them economically and spiritually. So that, that's what, what the, the Pākehā did. It took them 25 years to come up with two wars and the Native Lands Act of 1865 to subjugate the natives and engineering, as I call it, this country's greatest legal land-grabbing machine in the history of this country, the Native Land Court. Owe tokiri. It is at the forefront of every claim that ever came before the tribunal, and it is the tino tanifa in the history of the Treaty of Waitangi in nearly every claim that's been made, and it certainly is with this bill, sir. So much mamai is shared between these three tribes, but such are the travails, travails of interrelated hapu, the taking of the good with the bad. Let's look at the uh, economic benefits, sir, of what these tribes have missed out on. Ngāti Rangiwewehi and Rangite Aurere were owners of significant geothermal areas. Who amongst us here doesn't enjoy the therapeutic and healing waters of Waiariki office. 
Never mind the cultural benefits the tribes have missed out on, what about all that geothermal capacity? Haven't these tribes, like all indigenous tribes the world over, really missed out on and sharing the wealth from the natural resources of their own estate? Whether it's gold or ore or oil or geothermal energy, the tangata whenua always seems to miss out. As fossil fuels dwindle across the world, new and alternative methods of realising our future energy sources are needed. To my way of thinking, Rangiwewehi and Rangite Aorere have not only had their warm healing waters taken away from them, but also the chance to benefit economically from that geothermal capacity. Now I know when it comes to those natural resources, such as minerals like the oil and gas, that the Crown has first dibs. Crown minerals, they have the mana. That is the law. But surely, sir, it's time for that law to be rethought, to let the hapu and iwi share in the profits. Mr Speaker, the Tapuaka iwi have an interest in the Makatu area. Since their arrival on the Te Arawa Waka many, many years ago, and they've had more than their fair share of mamai over land loss and loss of mana. They've had their economic opportunities seriously curtailed. I'd like to highlight two points. They suffered the indignity of losing tribal estate, challenging to have that estate returned, only to have the Crown acknowledge the wrongdoing, and then trying to right that wrong by making the hapu beneficiaries in a block of land they had no cultural connections to. And we've come across that in various other settlements, sir, whether it's Mangakino, or you could talk about Silna in the Waiponamu as well. And this appears to have been quite the thing done back in the day, in the 1890s and 1900s. Is there any greater ignominy to Māori than that, being placed in the lands far away we have no connection to? I also think of the Palmer North Square for Te Atiawa to, uh, to uh, uh, just highlight another one of those uh, actions that we're taking in those days. And so, sir, there have been many missed economic development opportunities from these iwi. And if anyone needs a reminder of another missed opportunity for Tapuika, one only needs to look at the takutai and the change of tides that it brings over a 24-hour period. Every tide brings in their precious, precious resource known as sand. The same sand that road makers and builders the country over need to help construct the roads and pathways that lead to our big cities. And yet the only ones making any money off these resources are the big corporate players who only have to whip over the railway lines and dig up truckloads of ordinary sand and turn it into a multi-million dollar business. Well, why can't a tribe like Tapawika be a part of that industry? Why should the natural resources from their tribal estates go offshore to make other people rich? Mr Speaker, I've tried to use my time allocated to highlight just a few things, just a few things of these three proud iwi. Ngā punawai o te tokotoru tapu. Not tokotoru tapu. <laughs> Sorry, my, my, my rattanerness is coming out of me. <laughs> Ngā punawai o te tokotoru. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> the wairua. <word. laughs> but um, I, I have highlighted those three th uh, examples, sir, of missed opportunities. But the great thing is, sir, that these settlements uh, provide a new chapter for these iwi. It provides an opportunity to, for them to actually harness these opportunities now. And I'm delighted to be able to speak here and to mihi to all of the gathered here today. Uh, and we know that the Crown apologies have been offered and accepted cultural commercial redress has been offered as, and accepted, as well as financial redress. And now it's time for the descendants of Tamate Kapua and Tia and Kahumata Momoe and Rangitihi 
to finally start a new and exciting voyage like their ancestors of long ago. All those years ago back in Hawaii, the Arawa had little choice to leave. But now the mana has been given back to Ngāti Rangi Wewehi, Ngāti Rangi Te Aorere, and Tapuweka to decide their own future, and I wish them all the very best. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora mai tātou katoa. Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Christopher Finlandson.